All right, everybody, welcome back to Beans No Ball. The week 12 recap is finally here. Now, obviously, it's a long, great week of games this week, so let's just get it started with a snowy Thursday nighter. Yeah, man, we got a snow game. Who doesn't love a snow game, man? This is a nice snow game because both these defenses, they're really on the heels throughout this whole game. Miles Garrett and TJ Wall, both of those anchors for both of those guys' D linemen. They're really getting to the offense. This is really just a defensive game really on the first half. I mean, Cleveland had the lead 10-3, um, you know, at halftime there, so it was looking pretty pretty rough there you know Jameis still slinging the ball like he always does 219 yards he did throw an interception so you know obviously you know some of Jameis is still there too right but this is just all Brown's second half that defense was really getting into the to the to the run game of the Steelers team and that's exactly what stopped them there Jalen Warren and Najee Harris couldn't get anything going I mean Jalen had uh, Warren had 45 Najee had 41 um yeah 41 Jen did get the touchdowns to kind of help the Steelers in there too but you know the Browns game with Nick Chubb is two touchdowns to cap it off really that really set the tone there and that's the one thing about the Steelers team you know George Pickens he really wasn't getting it going he was getting locked up there too but when you have your main receiving and locked up Calvin Austin he was stepping up there so I'm really liking the connection between Russell Wilson and Calvin Austin it's finally starting to click there he got the connection with Pickens sadly he was getting locked up you got Calvin Austin the other side the receiver too who's really getting it going there so there's obviously some good price spots for this team they're still eight and three there they're still on top of the AFC East there but you know for this Browns team it was a really great win overall this offense really got to the heels over this really great Steelers defense yeah, the only thing you could look at, I mean, hey, draft position, this might uh, exactly. come back to haunt the Browns. Yeah. But yeah, it is an alarming loss for the Steelers, who would, could have kept up that, I believe, a two-game pace on the Ravens in the game that we'll yeah. get to in just a bit. But regardless, you know, maintain that first spot in the AFC North. Now, moving into the Sunday slate, Vikings-Bears. This game, obviously, a lot closer than we expected. And for the Bears fans, I mean, just, just got to say my condolences, man. I mean, the way these last three weeks have gone... Just once again, a heartbreaker. Just in general, everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong in this game. Another block field goal. That great interception uh, around the second or third quarter that ended up getting overturned by the pass interference. And then you get an onside kick. You tie the game on a field goal. And all that just end up losing in overtime on the field goal. Just rough. But, I mean, the bright spot, Caleb Williams, once again, looking great. It's going to be hard for him to really... Uh, come back into that rookie of the year canon with the other two star rookies really playing well but you know it's a lot of great signs to come once he gets a competent head coach and a competent you know offensive line to come and for the vikings it's another tough game i mean offensively they did not look good special teams and defense really did carry aside from the end where the defense didn't really look that good but just overall i mean Donald wasn't that great. Bright spot, got to say, uh, Jordan Addison, a career game for him, believing you know, over 100 yards in that touchdown, just great overall. And, you know, a win's a win. I guess that's the one thing you could say, but I got to say this Vikings team, they're starting to look like a wild card exit at best. Yeah, there's been a lot of sloppy wins with this Vikings team. You know, the teams around the league there, but they got it done against the division rivals, so that's always a good thing. There. And now moving on with the Lions and the Colts there, and the Lions, they're just continuing to be under, uh, to be a huge powerhouse. They're moving to 10 and 1, which is one of the best starts in, in I don't know how long there, but I do want to give it up for this Colts defense, man. They really held the Lions to just 24 points. And I mean, that says a lot from the from the 40 points they've been putting out the last couple of weeks there. So I want to give big credit to the Colts defense there. They were really shutting up for the most part there. But the run game is what really couldn't get out. I mean, Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Sonic and Knuckles still continue to be the, you know, the top running back though in the league. Gibbs going for 92 touchdowns, you know, Montgomery still having another slow game for 37 yards, but they cap up a touchdown there. They both you know, this is a running back duel. They do have 10 to, uh, excuse me, ten plus touchdowns of the year. So that's really nice to see that, you know, they're running against the Lions. It's really been improved for, for the years to come there. Jared Goff, once again, did have another slow game, though. You know, 269 yards, no touchdown, though. But, you know, when you have a run game like that, it really lets tone for the quarterback there. But, you know, the, still, I want to give a shout out to the really this cold season. And Anthony Richardson, there were a lot of flashes going on there. It was really a close matchup, you know, at least for the first quarter there. You know, it was 3 0 first quarter. You know, this was a pretty much of a grudge match there. But the Lions, they clicked. And that's exactly what this Lions team do. They click. They don't they don't start off slow, really, for the, for the whole two quarters. You know, the one quarter, Dan Campbell made the adjustments and they put up 14 right before halftime, having a 14 6 lead. So, this is the thing with this Detroit Lions team. You know, the coaches around them, Ben Johnson's, uh, you know, scheming up. This offensive really great and it's this defense too really shutting down the Colts as well i'm still hoping for Aaron rich you know sure it was a loss 24 6 but there's obviously some flashes there you know the development for Aaron rich it's going to be good for the for the for the next games and the years to come yeah obviously i mean it's like what we were saying you know the development is what's important the season is likely lost and we're seeing the signs that we're needing to see you know it's like we say every time you know it's pretty much it's pretty much a rookie quarterback 
we're starting to see him, you know, really show more of those flashes and less of those mistakes, mm-hmm. which is all we want to see now. Move it into the Patriots and the Dolphins. Now, obviously, the scoreline might look a little close, but this was all Dolphins, um, no doubt about it. I mean, they were just clicking all cylinders. Had a, mm-hmm. a shutout through, uh, I believe, three quarters. Right early on, the the uh, Patriots w- were able to finally get some scoring in. Look, nice to see them in the end. I mean, it was garbage time, sure, but, you know, there were some nice flashes. Gonzo, that scoop and score, just overall, the one bright spot you can obviously say for the for the Patriots, apart from Gonzo, is Drake May still playing relatively good ball despite not having any weapons. So, you know, all what we could say about him, you know, same thing with some of the other quarterbacks in this class, like Caleb, you know, once they get, get some better help around them, you know, it's going to start clicking for them. But for the Dolphins, man, I mean, Everything was clicking for them. Like I already mentioned, a great defensive showing. Offensively, Tua to A-Chain was money. Obviously, two passing touchdowns. You might look at, you know, weird weird day on the ground for A-Chain, but, you know, as a receiver, absolutely went off. Jalen Waddle obviously getting a touchdown too. Jonu Smith having a career year once again getting into the end zone. And I guess, you know, slow game for Tyreek, but didn't matter. Uh, obviously, 31 nothing at half and just a little bit of garbage time scoring for the Patriots, but, you know, this Miami team, obviously that slow start did hinder them to the, to from the start of the season, but you know they're getting hot at the right time, and that's what you really need to going into November and December. Yeah, and this Dolphins team they're really clicking there, and after the concussion, two has been nothing but near perfect since he's came back, and it's really nice, really great sign for this Dolphins team. Potential run there, but with those stack as AFC, AFC uh, conferences, gonna take a lot for that, right? And now moving on to my game, the Cowboys and the Commanders there now. Would I have preferred, you know, a loss here just for for better draft cap for a better draft? Yes, but against a division rival, it's always it's always going to be good, especially after you know them talking so much back to when we're this bad. And you know, this Cowboys defense, it, it really it really showed out. I mean, with Deron Bland coming back and absolutely shutting off one side of the field, him against McLaurin, he uh, I think believe he uh, only allowed less than five catches for 27 yards or under less than 30 yards. So that injury didn't all hinder him as well. He looked pretty good for pretty much uh, shutting off scary Terry and Josh Butler as well Until getting his. Uh, yeah, obviously until the end, you know, which I'll get into that in a bit there. Josh Butler as well, you know, obviously he was on Noah Brown most of the time, but he he was locked down. Josh Butler was really locked down, especially, with, you know, we were lost without Trayvon Dix on the secondary end, right there, right? So defense, it was really a big part getting into this commander's offense. Now we expected, you know, we expected Jaden Downs to rush, which, you know, he got 74 in a touchdown. We expected Austin Eckler, we expected Brian Robinson to really be, you know, pounding on the run game. But our wrist defense, they stopped them to, to the most part, you know, outside of Jaden Downs there. Mozzie Smith, he had some good flashes there. Michael Parsons, obviously being a game changer. Once again, so it's really good to see there. Kneeling coming back, obviously a big help there. But this defense, it was really getting to this commander team. And Jaden Daniels, he was looking really slow, right? And I see a lot of people defending Daniels, saying they're like, oh, he played good, this and that. Let's be real. All of this came out in the fourth quarter. It was pretty much just a grudge match. This defense was getting to Jaden Daniels. And this is already starting to be worried for this whole commander's team already on fraud watch. I know you've already been, you know, sending them on fraud watch for the past couple of weeks there. there. But this offense, they clicked. Cooper Rush had a great game. Rico Dowdle once again on the ground. Feeding Rico, getting him adjusted more to the run game. It's really nice to see lamb he had a good game uh he had a pretty decent game in the receiving end 67 yards there but a lot of clutch plays remain from cooper rush and this whole cowboys offense as well there we're going against the giants and look at this schedule would i like to see them like around yes but with our luck and this and that i would like to see a hold up just for a better chat position but overall this is a really great morale boost for the dallas cowboys team absolutely and i mean i would definitely not say it was a bad game for daniels i mean overall i mean you could say he was late in the game but you know yeah slow start had a great finish. I mean, can't call it garbage time. They were still definitely in that game. So overall, just a great uh, NFC East game that we did definitely didn't expect going into this. But move it into the other side of the NFC East. The Buccaneers and the Giants. Uh, the Giants, obviously, definitely dwellers. I mean, we could talk about all we want. You know, the whole Daniel Jones situation. He got cut. We didn't get to talk about it just yet. But, you know, now I guess we could throw it in. Uh, getting cut early, uh, early on last week. Throwing Danny DeVito. Not really... Uh, any surprise that I'm mean, just pretty much surprising to see DeVito instead of Locke, which that much we already got into. But I mean, throw in DeVito, throw in Daniel Jones. I mean, same result, just terrible offense for the Giants. I mean, not much more to see there. I mean, would like to see Drew Locke to at least make this team watchable. But as for the Buccaneers, absolute dominance. Baker Mayfield might say what you want, didn't have like the greatest stats. Uh, as a passer, but hey, got into the end zone, threw out the little Danny DeVito uh, celebration. The big story was on the run game, as I just said, with him uh, was Bucky Irving. Great game on the on the ground. I mean, specifically, I mean, this tandem in general, just 
I mean, arguably, I mean, sure, we could say all we want about the Lions, but this um, this Buccaneers run game definitely having their own flashes. Obviously, Giants not able to do anything. Say which one, you know, not even 100 yards, but I mean, he definitely had his own impact throughout the game. And of course, the defense, we've had our own things to say about this Buccaneers defense really struggling about that midseason point. But sure, was the Giants, but a great showing is a great showing. And as the as the season progresses, a performance like this is definitely going to be a great confidence boost for the Buccaneers. Yeah, even though, you know, it was good as the Giants, the quarterbacks have just been able to deplete it there. Same thing with the Bucs. They're still depleted. They work around there. Same with Baker. Uh, excuse me, Baker. Baker using what he's got. The run came out helped him to help him. It's a really nice shot for the Buccaneers to make a run. And now moving on to the Chiefs and the Panthers. And let's just say, even though they lost this Panthers team, there's a lot of bright spots now. Bryce Young, this is probably his best game yet of the season there. 21 for 35 on completion, 263 yards, and a touchdown. This wasn't their first half, though. This was all Chiefs' first half, but comes to the second half. This is where the Panthers were really clicking. Bryce Young was getting more comfortable in the pocket. His awareness was a little bit better. His O-line was actually blocking from his run game with Chuba. It was it was clicking towards more to the second there, right? But this is what you expect for Bryce Young. Don't give up on him too hard. I know me and you, we had our things early in the season that this could be it for Bryce, this isn't that, but we saw with the situation with, you know, the Bears not developing QBs. We see here Bryce Young, the three and eight, but this is a really good signing against, you know, the nine and one at the time, the nine and one Chiefs, now that they're 10 and one there. Then we showed out, and you know, it's funny, you know, I would have just picked Panthers just, for, you know, for the shits and giggles, not really much to lose, depending on how our records are there, but this was a nice, really good sharing for this whole Packers, or Packer, Packers, excuse me, Panthers organization there. Bryce Young was looking really, really great there, and you know, his development, he's getting there, and doing it against the Chiefs, that's already a bigger sign there. Moving on to the Chiefs side of the ball, Patrick Mahomes, he still had another great game. 269 yards for three touchdowns, so it was really nice to see there. Kareem Hunt still pounding, it, pounding the rock on the run game as well. And, you know, Travis Kelsey, you know, still pounding it, uh, you know, still helping down the receiving end after having a slow year, but no great. Being the leading receiver, D-Hop with the car, did get a touchdown to help him there. But, you know, this defense of the Chiefs, they're really getting, they're really getting on their groove, you know. You know, this Panthers offense, it was really getting to them, and it was a really close game towards the you know, end of the fourth there. Really suck to see that, you know, the Chiefs voodoo magic ended up helping out for the, with the game winner. But, you know, as for the Panthers, there's a lot of good signs coming into this offseason. With Bryce Young, build around him. Yeah, definitely started to get my confidence back on those mm -hmm. Bryce Young takes I was having earlier. And, yeah, the, the, the Chiefs. Hard to call it black magic. I think, you know, it was just a great, uh, great de uh, late game yeah. game plan for them. You know, keep on rolling 10 and 1 now. See how, how the season progresses for them. And going into the Titans on the Texans, one of the more surprising results this week. I mean, definitely, I mean, it was just a rough showing. I mean, the CJ Stroud sophomore slump, slump is starting to get real. I mean, those two interceptions. And of course, I mean, the story of this game that weird uh, brain dead safety he took right at the end, pulled a Dan Orlovsky to lose the game pretty much put this game out of reach still could have had a chance to to maybe drive down and get a field goal not the case and if we want to say this stuff about a field goal uh Kaimi Fairbairn missing a 26 yarder that could have pretty much sent this game to overtime but it's hard to really put it on Fairbairn I mean overall like I said just really got to get back to straw just a rough showing I mean not really getting Nico Collins involved as much as we would have wanted I me mean, sure he had that nice touchdown he had a nice 40-ish yard reception. I don't remember how much it was to get him into the red zone. Apart from that, not much. Really, apart from that, I mean, we can really tell the loss of Stefan Diggs is really starting to hurt this offense. And I mean, defensively was the only way that the Texans were really staying in this game. You could say, you know, 32 points, say, say what you want, but the defense did uh, hold their ground for the most part. For the Titans, I mean, not not a result that you probably would have wanted maybe you would have wanted to take a loss like the stuff you're saying about your cowboys but i mean hey it's a nice confidence boost i mean will levis mixed bag on him he had that really ugly pick six but he also had those beautiful throws to westbrook Kine and oconquo so say which one i mean he could start showing those flashes i still don't expect him to be the long-term future here but i mean one last thing you know tony pollard great game for him uh 119 yards in the touchdown obviously nice to see your former cowboy showing out yeah, man, I think I might have jinxed uh, CJ Stroud with the slump for slump. I do remember mentioning that. Hopefully, it doesn't hit him, and this is this is really ugly. You know, unfortunate there. Now, moving on to the other side of the conference with the AFC West, the Broncos and the Raiders. And let's just say, you know, Bo Nix, once again, the narrative continues with him finally putting up an offensive rookie of the year campaign and starting to see here 25 completions on 42 attempts, 273 yards, and two touchdowns. So, obviously, your take on him from the beginning, this is probably your best take so far there. And it was nice to see, obviously, with the help of that great defense 
defense that the Broncos do have there. I mean, first half, this looked all Raiders game. I mean, their defense was clicking. Their offense was going, you know, having a 13-9 lead at, at half there. But one second half hit, Bo Nix, he got adjusted. The adjustments were made there, and he was really, and he was really clicking. Cortland Sutton, this is one guy that, you know, I still had a lot of hope for when he was drafted. You know, this is one guy I was eyeing in the 2018 draft. You know, we ended up getting Michael Gallup because he ended up going a little bit early, which, you know, I still miss Gallup, but, you know, off topic there, you know, the connection with Knicks and Sutton, it's clicking once again, and their connection is really going to be a really deadly factor coming in the next couple of games there. So it's really nice to see Corden Sutton. He's finally getting the connection. He's getting the opportunities he gets with the competent quarterback, you know, throwing him the ball there. Same with uh, Devon, um, I have said, Devon Vele. Hopefully I didn't butch that as well. He had another great, uh, you know, great attempt at the receiving end with 80 yards there. But it was really nice, another nice showing, you know, especially, you know, the Raiders, they usually got in the, you know, the best of the Broncos there. But now that the Broncos got a competent quarterback, you know, the roles have reversed there. And Carter Minshew, he is now out for the season there on an injury there. So they're probably going to roll with Desmond Raider. They're going to have to see what's, what's going to be up with there. And we saw when he came in, didn't look the best there. You know, once again, this is all the second half Broncos football. Yeah, look at the at the Raiders. I mean, looking bleak. Honestly, hard to see them yeah. winning another game this year. And, you know. Broncos, you know, playoffs are definitely becoming a reality. But move it into my division, the Niners and the Packers. I mean, this one, I think we expected this result from the start, but I mean, regardless, I mean, I guess, you know, it just it just confirmed our thoughts. I mean, absolute dominance for the Packers. First and foremost, Josh Jacobs, my fantasy star, three touchdowns, over a hundred yards, just a phenomenal look. I mean, setting the tone early right away. I mean, sure, the touchdown went to Kraft, but he was the, the tone setter on that opening drive. Pretty much the whole first half to start leading that 17-0 um, lead early on. Niners were lucky to only be down 10, I believe, at half with all the penalties they were having. I mean, just uh, relatively kept the game close to start and floodgates open late. Now, the stuff you could say about the Niners, I mean, I know they have all those injuries. Say all you want, but I mean... The struggles, I mean, it's it's getting a bit much. And you probably would have expected Brandon Allen to maybe have a little bit more success. But, I mean, that, that's what happens when you kind of st start forgetting about that backup quarterback position, uh, which last year seemed so important. You probably would have wanted them to, to maybe focus on that just a bit more. But, I mean, look, they're last in the division, but only a game out. So that's the one shining spot that I guess the Niners can look back on. And... For the Packers, big bright spot that you got to look out. No turnovers for Jordan Love. That was obviously the main thing that was starting to hold this offense back. 38 points and no turnovers. I mean, we see the correlation for the Packers. Yeah, the Packers, they finally started to click there. Jordan Love finally like having another, finally having a great game. They're having a pretty slow, slow last couple of games there. Josh Jacobs finally being the ground and pound guy on the run in there. So we succeed the Niners finally been there. And now sticking it with the NFC West, the Cardinals and Seahawks. And let's just say it, it was a pretty ugly one. It's pretty ugly. Game. Let's get that out the way. There, there's another defensive battle. Kyler and Gino. I mean, the interceptions they were ugly, especially Kyler's pick six. I mean, Devon Witherspoon forces the pressure for Kobe Kobe Durant to pick it off, get run into pick six. That pretty much solidified, you know, the the win there for for the Seahawks. Even though there's still a couple of quarters to play there, but I want to say Gino, even though he had a slow rough going, you gotta give credit to the Seahawks defense for really getting to the Cameron in this offense. They really shut down the run game, and that's the one thing with this Cardinals offense. Once the running game is going with James Conner, Trey Benson. And even in Mario DeMarco, right? You know, getting the other guys and the assets into the run game, specifically James Carter, seven carries for eight yards. That was really the, the the that was really the stat there that really helped the Seahawks really win this game. And it was their defense, you know, containing Kyler early on, and you know he really couldn't get in it. Even on the ground game, you know, containing Kyler on the ground game, that's another uh, spot for the Cardinals that really gets to go and get there. On the receiving end, Trey McBride, he had another great game there for 130 yards. Didn't really do much there, but the Seahawks, you know, they move it to six and five. Geno Smith, he just got to contain, you know, those, you know, the way. He throws those interceptions based on one in the red zone that really that it was just ugly man really really ugly it was a slow going for kenneth walker as well but you know receiving that jsn thank god help me on fantasy there send a seven yards for one touchdown outside of metacalf you know this geno smith to jsn connection is still starting to click there and if the seahawks really want to make a run the defense it's gonna be a big fact of this and geno smith wants to get out the quarterback the connection with him and dk metcalf is gonna to have to click even better yeah, despite that little slip up going from 3-0 to 3-3, three three, yeah. the Seahawks defense is the main point why they're still in this and why they're at the top of the NFC West at this point. Now, obviously, it's a really congested division that we'll see if they can hold it up, but obviously a lot of football still to play. And 
Closing out the Sunday slate, going to the Sunday night to round out the NFC West with my Rams going against the Eagles. And this was a rough one. Now, obviously, I took my Rams trying to, you know, just take the morale. I and mean, we had that chance, but clearly going into it, I mean, not much going. I mean, sure, first half looked great. I mean, great first drive, of course, until the Kyron Williams fumble, which that is becoming a problem. Two fumbles in this one. He only lost that first one, but five fumbles in the last, I mean, ever since that Packers game in week five. So it really is starting to become a problem. Really hope that gets instilled into him throughout practice this week and throughout the rest of the season when hoping that issue gets put down. But apart from that, O-line once again having a rough showing. I mean, we need Rob Havenstein back ASAP. I know that's kind of been the main fact. I mean, he was the anchor throughout whenever this O-line would have success. And to your O-line success, Warren McLennan was a great backup option that was showing up. But in this game, no, nowhere to be found. Absolutely horrible showing. Probably would expect Joan Opum to get that, get that spot back, even though he's probably worse. But, I mean, get into the important part. I mean, the Saquon Barkley game. 250 yard, 255 yards on the ground, 302 total. And of course, those 270 yard touchdowns that really put this game to bed. Now, can I say those two touchdowns were probably also in large part because of a terrible defensive showing? Very much so. But I mean, overall, the Eagles, this, this Eagles team just absolutely dominated the second half, which was the big point. I mean, first half, this game was relatively close. Second half, not so much. And I mean, what, what can I say? I mean, seven wins in a row for the Eagles not much else to say and they're really starting to put that di um get, get get a get a open up a lead on on this nfc east specifically with the slip-ups of the commanders we're starting to really see them run away with this division yeah i mean look it was a pretty it was a close game towards the first half there but like we see with the eagles they're a majority a second half team and they really put up against you know the depleted rams team and you know, sad to see but nice to see the safe ones finally balling with a team that you know that they actually want you know? Now close it off with the Monday Nighter, a nice AFC matchup with the Ravens and the Chargers. Now, obviously, coming into this game, the Ravens, they're top three statistically in every category on offense. You name it. First downs, total yardage, total points, explosive plays, et cetera, et cetera, right? And coming into a you know a Chargers defense, I think they're the top one in the league, the top five defense in this league there. Is really strong for, for the most part there. I mean, the first drive for the Chargers, it looked really great. Justin Herbert really comfortable getting his passes to his lead receiver, Lad McConkey, uh, McConkey, who's really having a nice rookie season for them, really already having a great boost for that receiving end there, there too, right? But after that, you know, that first touchdown, the Ravens, they clicked, right? Second quarter, this was all balls for 14. You got the 14-6 lead there too with the 14... Uh, 14 13 at halftime. There, excuse me, got this six a little there too. Third quarter, it was usually a battle of both defense there, but Derrick Henry is the story 24 carries for 140 yards. The statistics still carries on with Derrick Henry rushed for 90 and more. The Ravens, I believe, they are undefeated, and it happened there. This is the offense, right? Even though the Titans ran down Derrick Henry in Tennessee. With the assets that this Baltimore Ravens team has outside of Derrick Henry, you got Zay Flowers, Mike Andrews just finally stopped it up a bit. You got the security black uh Rashad Bateman. Derrick Henry, the run in, it should really put it off less stress on Lamar Jackson. We see only 177 yards thrown, but two touchdown passes that really set the tone for this great round to get him to get this win there. And Justin Herbert, let's just say the receiving end, Quinnen Johnson. Quinnen drops in, he's coming back. Five targets, five drops, especially on that third down play that really could have potentially, you know, helped the Chargers, you know come back in this game even better with much more time on the clock there too it really sucks to see that you know justin herbert you know he's been getting up all this team all this year but now this game really showed it there especially on the run game jk that injury really got into that that injury really got to jk they're only going for 40 yards so that was another big issue there too i'm not worried about this chargers team though. i know this defense it's going to pick it up once again i know this offense once they get the whole jk diamonds injury settled there you know and hopefully quinn johnson he lets his game go to side and he finally picks it again with this receiving court yeah, of course. Thankfully, my fantasy matchup was already wrapped up for this because I had two donuts too, on this yeah. one with Isaiah yeah. Likely and Quinnen Johnston. I mean, yeah, just a rough showing for me. And yeah, obviously, that is going to wrap up the games for this week. Before we move on into something else real quick, obviously, the predictions, you know, you went 2-0 on this one. You're gaining just a little bit, but still down, it's I believe, dagger. nine in total. So see, see if you actually pull it up. But the way this is going to work out, I mean, obviously, Christian, you're going to be out of town for Thanksgiving. We are, we're, we're not going to have Bean Talk for this week. We'll skip it. We'll we'll get, what is it going to be? Episode 25 will be next week. So 
Uh, instead of getting getting the whole getting everything out, we'll just get get you our picks for Thanksgiving this week, and then let I think Friday we'll post the the week picks. So I'll just uh, throw mine out there. I'll, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be in agreement at least until that last one. But I'll take the the Lions, Cowboys, and uh, Packers in this one. Uh, see what you're gonna go with. Yeah, good agree on there. Detroit, Dallas, and Green Bay. I was actually I was kind of leaning to Miami there, but. After seeing how that's, you know, I mean, that's the only like, one yeah. we really have really anything, there, anything right. to think about. I mean, it's gonna be a great primetime game mm-hmm. early on. We probably didn't, it didn't seem like a Thanksgiving type matchup, but I mean, gonna have a nice night, Cav. I mean, at least nice to wake up from that one after a nice little, we'll, we'll take a nap for the Cowboys Giants game. So, not nice, nice to get some real football after that. But that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you like and subscribe. Hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving and see you guys back for next week's recap.